<clears throat> okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today we're going to continue recreating a painting by another one of my favorite artists. Uh, a couple of days ago, we began this painting and put a few hours into it, and then I had to, to run to do some childcare. Now I want to finish this painting off, and uh, let's just see where we're at. Well, actually, before we do that, just a quick little reminder to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when unusually scheduled videos like this appear and you don't miss out on them. Uh, also, if you want to leave a small donation, if you want to contribute via PayPal as little as 25 cents or as a super chat or send an e-transfer through the email or through the Facebook group, all of the links are down below. So uh, say hi and that would be great uh, in, uh, by joining the Facebook group. So here's our Facebook group. Consider joining this and uploading a photograph of your painting that you made today to the Facebook group. You could see, look at these incredible paintings. There's May back after a long break. Did our Van Gogh's irises painting that we did um, maybe four or five months ago. I'm not sure. So um, also there is the outline for today's episode within the Dropbox folder. So if you click on the Dropbox holder, you will see a whole bunch of links to outlines for all sorts of paintings. We are right here. And again, there's the original painting and the outline that we use to get this painting started. Go back and watch part one of this video so that you can find out exactly what happened. These were, were basically at... I think I called this foreground pass number two, the step number two, um, or pass number two on the foreground. So basically what we're doing here is kind of foreground pass number three, and then the finishing touches, side-by-side -side comparison, probably in about an hour and a half. What we're about to do is takes a little bit of time, so it's not particularly complex, it's just a little bit time-consuming. So... Here's the state of our painting at the moment. Um, you know, we've got all the background, the clouds are in place, and these trees back there are in place. It looks like, you know, I could kind of darken them a little bit, but I don't mind them like that. And our ground is also in place. The two things, basically, three things, I guess, is leaves, the tree trunks themselves, and of course, the figure standing, um, leaning against this tree as the wind sort of blows her skirt. She sort of seems to be kind of holding it down. Um, I love this painting. So let's get right to it. Um, uh, again, I've already explained at length the kind of paints and the system that I'm using here. But today I would try to use up some paint that... Uh, has been sitting in these jars and sometimes when I empty out the tube ooh, looks like this yellow is so I'll just put a bunch of it here if I don't end up using it then I can put it on my Jade Feo painting you may recognize this painting from uh, a year ago this is what i do with all the extra paint at the end of a painting session i scrape it off glop it on here just as jay defeo herself did uh, she was a great uh, american artist from the this and this painting is you know she worked on it for eight years and they had to take it and it was a, it's a large painting it's in the la county museum of art in los angeles collection currently uh, but they had to take the wall off of her apartment to get that big painting. It weighs a couple tons. So I love that. 
Oh, look at all those people in the chat, too. This is great. There's Paula says, hello. Hi. Thanks, Michael. You're such a hard worker. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, uh, Nikki says, good evening, y'all. It's a pleasure to see uh, seeing this video at midnight from Tennessee. That is awesome. And... Pascaline says, good morning from the UK. Awesome. So we've got some people staying up late and some people up early. <laughs> that just blows my mind that we can be painting uh, together all around the world, all at once. So beautiful. Okay. And this makes me also very happy to use up paint that has been sitting in these jars for a while. This is the benefit of having painting pants. <laughs> and sometimes I have to remind myself when I'm not wearing these pants, not to just wipe things, whether it's like I'm changing our daughter and my hands are dirty with poop or something on them and I'm like I go to like oh don't just wipe the poop on your pants Michael what do you sometimes I just get so used to wiping everything off on my clothes okay that's right what am I missing my cool red Will I, oh, I did use a bit of the cool red in her dress, so I was just thinking, do I need to use this? Of course, it's a lot, you know, it makes, it makes more logical sense to only put the paint on here that uh, you're going to use, and therefore just sort of waiting until you need it to scoop it out, but, um... I find again that takes just that extra couple seconds and sometimes I want it it's, it's, it sort of takes me out of the zone a little bit so I put on a, a kind of a minimum amount of paint and this is that's actually more than I probably need for tonight but I am uh, as I'm building up that Jay DeFeo painting I kind of think oh it's just kind of exciting to see it get thicker and thicker so okay Pascaline says, I wipe my paint brushes off of my dressing gown. <laughs> or, I, or I wipe my hands and um, paint brushes. Hey, it makes sense. I mean, that's why you, know, you see a lot of artists have aprons. Um, I've never been in... Well, I've tried using aprons. And then I always found... Um, uh, I would get paint on my clothes anyway, so I was just like, apron sometimes just getting in the way, and so I was like, you know, if I'm just gonna, if I'm gonna get paint on my sweater, or my shirt, or my pants, even with an apron, I might as well just go right, take the apron off and get right into it. Okay, so let me just again, let's just, let me think what I need to do here. What color am I gonna mix up first? Um, well, I think I'm going to paint the, the trees first. I, well, do I? I want to, I was, or do I want to do the leaves first? I think it would be best, let's paint the, the, the trees first, because there's a little bit more blending. So I'm also going to be using my glazing fluid. So we have these warm browns here. Let's mix up. Um, a warm brown here. Let's do this right here. So that's all we're gonna mix a kind of a bigger batch. Take some warm red. 
let's stir that in. So notice how I kind of start and then with mostly yellow and then as I need more, I kind of scooped into the um, my red that I put aside there. And same thing with my warm blues. This is all warm colors. And I, the, the browns that I want are going to be m quite dark. So we want um, a, more blue and red than we might typically put in. Because that's going to make this darker and darker and darker. And we've already got you know, the, the local color in here. So this color, maybe if I just zoom in, is, is sort of the color that we see kind of not necessarily in the center of these tree trunks, because sometimes, you know, it's towards the outer edge and then it's darker on one side or another. But it's kind of, it's, it's the, the color that's sort of unmodified. It's maybe even a little bit darker than this. And that's, this has got a little bit more red. This has got a little bit more blue. And we're going to be using a lot more blue, but I'll, let's just kind of see if we can get close to matching that color just to start with. I'd say that's pretty close. Not bad. Yeah. Okay. So that's the color that we already have. So... I'm going to, let's put a little bit of it up on these edges, and then let's go darker still. So right now that kind of looks greenish. It's like, well, it's or a greenish brown. Let's take just a little bit more red. That will counteract a little bit of the green. Um, but I think that might be good to get started. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do... I wonder, you know what, let's take a bit more out. Uh, just to save a little bit of time here. I was going to do a couple of gradations of this, but you know what? All we need to do is make it good enough for government work, as my grandfather used to say. So, we got our color mixed up. Let's get some glazing fluid in here. So this glazing fluid is going to make this paint thinner. More transparent so that I can uh, glaze with it. It's glazing fluid, so I'm going to be glazing with it. but. Essentially, it's going to allow me to brush on thin layers of semi-transparent paint and then kind of fade it out uh, to make a, a gradation of uh, this slightly darker... Well, it's, it's more than just slightly. It's, it's, it's much darker brown. Um... Wiping this excess off because now there's. Okay. Where should we start here? Let's just jump back. 
let's go to the far left of this painting. That makes sense to me. Oh, I just wanted uh, sounds of life. Is, says hello. It's midday in Vietnam right now, and I'm watching during my break at work. Not having the tools right now, but rewatch and do it later. That is awesome. That's so cool. Sounds of life. I love that you're taking a little. This is your break. Is that you're watching us and getting inspired to paint a little bit later over on the other side of the world in Vietnam. That is so cool. That is so. That makes me so excited. Great to see you. Nice to see you, Sounds of Life. Okay, so let's get into this painting. Um, so, I think I'm just going to work my way left to right here. Um, I'm, again, I'm going to be probably uh, doing another version of this, maybe with a black. So this is just going to get me darker, but not as not totally dark. focus got that and then there's another brush there to do any kind of blending right. let's go even smaller hmm not really much of a difference here you know uh, well let's I'm just gonna take a bit of paint that's got a little bit more pigment yeah barely noticeable Michael okay so the, I think it, it is darker but it we need to go take a bigger leap here so let's So I just had like a little bit of like a hair, stray hair that made a darker line where I didn't want it to go. So I'm applying this pretty thickly. Thickly? Is that a word? Thickly? It's very thickly. Um, uh, definitely thicker than, than I need to. Or maybe even should. <laughs> um, one thing is, is if you apply this like really thick, then more fluid kind of comes off Ooh. there's you can hear a mouse moving in the rafters of my studio here gross
blending brush now is pretty dirty. Um, let's take the same color. So we'll keep on going. It looks a little bit patchy right now, but I think we'll, don't worry about uh, making it perfect. And I, I think as we go on, it'll clean up. I think probably the best is just to do one side at a time. That's there's more control that way, and uh, I was just getting impatient and thought I could save a little bit of time. But painting is like, are you kidding? You're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to take your time on this one, Michael.
let's go to the other side now. I like how there's you know, definitely little, there's different areas in these trees. It just shows these observing things closely. So like here we have a little bit of a, a lighter edge on the outside. really should have blow dried that other side first before I started blending into it because it just starts pulling the previous layer of paint off. I don't necessarily mind, you know, as I'm scrubbing and it's, you know, it's pulling some paint up it, it's it's not the worst thing that could happen um, when we're painting a tree it just sort of gives it actually a little bit of texture that is kind of nice so um, This area here, I always thought was super weird. sure what I want to do there. Hmm. I was going to kind of be tr try to be very clever and quote unquote fix that but it must looks like there's a reason why he did it that way so let's just go back to the way the master did it Thank you. 
Pascaline says, I wonder what this lady is thinking. That's a great question. And Cat is High says, I finally made it to the live stream. That is awesome. And look, there's Shiva as well. well. Look at this. The whole gang is back together again. That's great. I love it. There's people that, uh, you know, when I'm usually doing these episodes in the middle of the day or the afternoon here on the west coast of North America, people can't tune in and do a little one a little bit differently and a whole different crowd shows up. That's so exciting. People that can't usually make it at this time. That's great. See, I'm, I'm a little bit less talkative at <laughs> this time of day than I am in the middle of the day. Oh, I'm trying to, what if was, what uh, needs to be said about this painting that I haven't already said? I don't know. Also remember that, you know, the, the, as the paint is shiny, it, it has a particular kind of look that some people really like. I, I personally am not the biggest fan of that really reflective look of acrylic paint, which is why I usually use matte uh, fluids and such to um, keep the shine down. Gonna omit this little root that's down here and just have a little bit less space to work with, so. And let's see, this is a much darker tree. Is there any point in even doing? this on this tree maybe a little bit we're gonna mix a black here in just a few moments so maybe i'll just fill up any kind of patchy areas with this darker color we'll probably actually end up lightening some putting some highlights on this versus darkening this particular one Um, let's back out here. I'm going to keep, so um, my blending brush, I'm going to, I just wiped off any excess paint. I'm going to keep that 
Um, I'm not going to clean it because I want it to be as dry as possible. So if I do clean it, what I usually do is let it dry and I switch to a different brush while my blending brush is drying. Um, and then this little brush, I'm going to use it again in a moment, but I'm going to be blow drying. And often when I'm using really small brushes, uh, you know, there's just less paint on there, it'll dry faster, so it's a little bit more dangerous to let it just sit there for 20-30 uh, minutes, because it's going to dry on your... the paint will dry and ruin those small brushes, which are usually expensive, so it's a good idea to, to take care of your brushes. Okay, let's mute this for a moment. Let's, let's mix a black and then see what we want to do here. So let's take, I'm gonna take a big slop of this cool yellow that is on its last legs here. Pretty chunky and gross. That's okay because we're going to be using very small amount of this black. Um, why I put so much on here. Again, I got my Jade Feo I'm working on, and got to get a lot of paint on there. And also, this is all recycled paint. All of this paint is actually from painting classes that I teach. And at the end of the class, I just get people, I just say, just leave your palettes there. I'm just going to scrape off all that extra paint, and here's where that paint is gone. It's gone and in, going into this painting as we speak here. I, I just always constantly just see so many people using so much more paint than necessary. So. Now that's not much, it's a little bit darker than, than the uh, color I was just using. The other thing is, is that we'll probably use this in a little bit higher concentration. Well, or maybe, I don't know, let's think about it. Let's... So I just put some um, glaze, matte glazing fluid here. It's a lot of paint. Um... Yeah, I was going to clean it, but I think there's going to be a few places where I'm going to want to use it. So I'm just going to take keep my blending brush and to blend anything out. So let's go back in here. Let's darken. 
you can see this little that once was a tiny thin little branch and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger So you could see when I paint this on a much lighter uh, tree here, how much darker that color appears. Like at first it's like, I don't know, it's just barely visible. That's because that surface is already pretty dark, so it's not showing up as much. There is that little highlight right underneath there. That maybe we'll paint that in as a as a lighter color. But we'll also see like once we get this darker here, maybe we don't need to do it. I mean, obviously he saw at, at, as he was working on his painting that he needed that there. So um, I think he's painted that there rather than just blending shy of it, but we'll, we'll take a look here.
keep kind of putting too much glazing fluid on here. And it's hard to blend when you've got big gobs of fluid. Uh, it's sort of, there's a fine line between, um, you don't want to put too little on, on there because if you put too little, it'll dry really before you can blend it. So you want to have enough on there that'll stay wet uh, so that it can be blended, but you also don't want to put too much on there that it's hard to, you, you just end up kind of painting with your blending brush. As I said, I'm going to do the other sides there if necessary. After I'll blow dry this, I kind of learned my lesson the first time around, so just take my time. <laughs> Maybe I should be paying attention to the original, not bad. Oh, that's interesting. There's a little shadow of this tree on the tree in behind. Okay. The the probably the most prudent way to go about that be to just continue doing what I'm doing and glaze that afterwards because then I'm, I'm, I'm sort of running the risk of glazing into wet paint and that's always super frustrating.
Um, let's do down here. Also notice how I'm kind of doing small sections at a time. I'm not, again, because I, I'm trying to get that paint at the right consistency where it's going to still be wet. And if I put oops, um, too much on or too little on, it's going to dry too quickly. So by kind of doing little, like half the tree and only one side at one time, it just gives me a little bit more control. It's, yes, it's a little bit slower, but it's more likely that I'll get the result I want if I take just that little bit more time. Okay. Get my black. There's a little bend in this tree that I just painted out. I'm just going to keep it like that. It doesn't have to be like the original. Okay, let's just uh, take a look here. Just see how we're doing. Pretty good. It definitely it makes a huge difference as we start getting some of these shadows in, right? Just gives these makes these trees look more three-dimensional whenever you um, push the the values the, the contrast between light and dark you're gonna get that illusion of reality or of um, three dimensions on the, uh, a flat surface like that Pascaline says, I need four paintings on a go. One, Michael's classes. Two, watercolor learning. Three, my own creatively mixed media. Four, painting from tutorials or not for my wall or for a gift. Oh, and what about sketching two? <laughs> That's a lot of work. It's hard to manage all those different things simultaneously in one's mind. That's impressive. Let's blow dry that.
Okay. I mean, let's just take a look and see. I mean, yeah, I could lighten a little bit. Maybe I'll get a little bit of white there. Um... I think what I'm going to do, just like what he did, is just selectively darkening little bits on the right-hand side of these trees. That gives it the look that, you know, because if I do, if I do both sides of like that tree, it suggests the light is coming from like behind my head, or um, behind Lionel Fitzgerald's head uh, as he's painting it. When the light, I think, is probably coming. It's a little ambiguous here. I mean, we don't even really see shadows. It's not like the shadows are, yeah. So maybe, or I mean, it actually, now that I think about it, it, it is possible that the light is coming directly forward and that the shadows are hidden behind all these trees. Um, but the way that it, I, I do think the light might be coming, it's also possible the light is coming straight down. Um, because we have the shadows under here. So the, the, the lighting in this situation is a little bit ambiguous. I do, th I do think it's maybe probably top right coming down in here. Um, but anyway, the, the reason why having a little bit of areas that are, you know, a little bit on this side, but also more, uh, light also hitting the, the right hand side is because it, it, it creates the look that blah, blah, blah. Having having some areas on the right with a little bit of shadow and then other places where there's no shadow and that's where the highlight is suggests that the light is coming down through the trees and creating little shadows in places and then other areas where the light is passing right through and illuminating the right-hand side of the tree. So kind of like he's doing in this painting is allowing some places like uh, here, you know, we see that highlight, that light coming through. So yeah, it's definitely, the light is definitely coming from the top right hand corner, but there's just places where the light is hitting the tree directly, uh, places where there's shadow being cast. And then even like maybe in an area like this where light is potentially bouncing off the grass and then back onto the tree in, in certain places because the ground is illuminated. Okay, so let's go back in here and let's do a little bit of that. So, we'll start on the left-hand side again. Um, I want to do, I think I'll do a little bit more here. You know, and now I see, like, look at this area. That's, I don't know what I was thinking here, but, oh, I guess there is a tree right there. That's why I left that blank. Um, it's kind of too, I mean, I, the easiest thing would be to maybe build a, 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 a branch coming off of here. I could, yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that. We'll just pretend, like, let's see. If anything darkening that brings more attention to that area, but um,
This is one of the weirdest parts of this painting, I think. Um, okay, so you can see here's where he's got this dark shadowy area on the right, and then it kind of comes down here like that. We'll leave that and come back. noticed that this tree splits off up top there. I didn't notice that at first.
was going to do that uh, shadow, right? Okay, we're getting, uh, I just want to do a little bit more of this, then we'll do a highlight package, <laughs> and then we'll uh, get uh, closer to wrapping, well, well, we'll be done the trees, that's one part of it, well, I guess we got to do leaves too, darn it. And there's Pascal says, hello, it's 2 a.m. I had some painting done earlier and then some Netflix and some word fixing. And I was going to go to sleep and I remember the course was tonight. Will there be a part three? I, I hope not. <laughs> no, there will be just, this will be the end of this painting for sure. There's maybe another Fitzgerald painting, but, but not uh, another part three of this. Okay. Um, let's do a little gray. Let's take our white. It's pretty sticky. Let's take our black. It gives us a gray. And then we'll take some glazing fluid. I just blow dried this, right? Okay. <laughs> what, are, what have I been up to lately? Uh, ideally, I would use a clean. Yeah, I was like, ideally, I'd use a clean bl blending brush. So let's use a clean blending brush. <laughs> um, okay. So a few. Pl actually, maybe it's just worth bouncing back out. So places where I'm going to add a little bit of this highlight might be a bit on this tree here. Might be a bit he maybe here, down this little stump part here, this branch, and then the tree on the far right. So let's zoom back in. Work our way from the left.
I think I have to be careful about going using too much of this. And I think instead of using this right down here, I'm going to use a different brown. But he's used this right here. It's interesting, he, he's kind of almost using this a little bit in this area to push this tree a little bit further backwards in space. Just lightening it up ever so slightly. Like uh, giving that little bit of a gray just pushes it a little bit further backwards. That, this, this looks, I like this particular kind of little look here. This is something I'm going to remember. Um, I mean, this is, you know, the whole reason why I'm doing this, you know, I began doing this as a, just a, during the pandemic as a way to continue my in-person or my, in, in order to continue my, my classes that I was teaching in person. And then I sort of, COVID went on longer than I think all of us maybe expected, and still going on, I, I guess you could say. Um, but it's also, real. this, doing these episodes has also become like a, a great teaching tool for myself. I've learned a lot doing these episodes, and so... By no means am I the master. We're studying from other acknowledged masters here. And uh, each one of these paintings teaches me something.
back in there in a moment. Okay. Pascal says, this painting is amazing. The grass effect with glazing. Wow. The whole time Fitzgerald painted, did he not notice any squirrels, birds, or butterflies? Good question. <laughs> I mean, I think um, as he's painting, uh, I think, you know, his his kind of vision for painting is something that is um, almost like kind of academic. Like we talked in the first episode about kind of seeing through reality to the shapes that, that underlie um, everything. Or at least that's a particular philosophy, not just of art, but, you know, it's this Platonic concept of that we only are really seeing the shadows on the wall. If you've ever read The Cave, which I had to do back in college by Plato. And so we're also just seeing... The, illusions when there's a the real reality is in front of us but but so we it's hard to perceive so artists are trying to see through the facade of things um and so i think kind of like the squirrels and everything like you're saying are almost like a little bit of a distraction it's like that's not the essence of reality it's sort of like another detail that we need to kind of push aside to see the truth. Do, do I necessarily agree with, with that approach uh, or, or philosophy? Not really, in, in, that, say, in that way. But, um, so I, it's probably, like, I mean, we don't see blades of grass in here. Everything is kind of smooth. It also reminds me, another artist that potentially might have influenced him was Thomas Hart Benton, an American artist who was Jackson Pollock's teacher, who did work nothing like Jackson Pollock, or at least the Jackson Pollock that I think most people think of, you know, the drip paintings, but um, had this very kind of, like, uh, who's another, what's his name, Wood, um, Grant Wood um, painting, uh, just, uh, who did uh, famously American Gothic, you know, the husband and wife stand, you know, the farmer standing with the pitchfork and his wife next to him, which we are doing soon and over the next, in the next month, I think. Um, but just the look of their work, it's, it's not about the details. It's about the grander structure that underlies reality. Great question though. Um, let's see, do I want to put So this is just like the same brown that is kind of underlying all of these, but just more yellow in it. And I might have to do this a few times. Sounds like somebody's got a car outside that has got some real heavy bass blaring. 
And it's like 11.30 at night here, so... So this is nice. I kind of I like these little. Uh, I think it's just a great approach he's showing us here. It complements the the gray that I put up there quite well. Like it, I like how they blend together in certain places, and it just becomes a little bit more gray in certain places. Again, it just shows that nuance that I think is so important here. just kind of <laughs> like any of these paintings I'm gonna just sort of get uh, totally absorbed into it and forget like um there's a clock at all uh so maybe I should just move on from the tree because I, I could probably stay here painting them forever
Okay. Um, that's, I think, probably good enough for that right there. <laughs> Paul says, make sure all the doors are locked. Good idea. Late at night, gotta keep the doors locked. Paul says, you might need coffee for work tomorrow. To both Pascal and I, I bet. <laughs> um... Okay, let me, just so I can keep things straight here. So, I think we finished the tree trunks. Let's, basically what we've got to do left here is the this female subject in the bottom right and the leaves here. Uh, I think I'm going to do the, the person first and then save the leaves for last because... You know, I, I mean, the leaves aren't finished, but if worse comes to worse and an asteroid hit, went through the window and hit me, I'd want the, I, I could live with this, but this would drive me crazy if this was unfinished. So let's move on to the figure in the bottom right corner. Okay. So let's zoom in and um, so what we're going to here to, to make that color again what we did is we took our cool red and some cool blue mix that together so we get a red dominant purple right and then we took some white and mix that in here. Let's just do a bit more of that. And then that gives us our color uh, that we've used. Um, well, okay. So, and then I'm going to put a little bit of glazing fluid in here. I think I'm just going to go right into this. Um, the dress is a little bit transparent, so. I'm just gonna let's just paint this whole thing in real quick. Okay, so let's blow dry that. Okay, so now let's take, um, let's see, is this my blending brush? Let's take more white and put this into our glazing fluid so that's substantially more white than it was before it's also quite opaque um, so 
be careful about using this. As you can see, I left a little bit of that darker outline on the left-hand side there. I gotta be careful. Ah, I shouldn't have done that last little bit because it was kind of mostly dry there. So that's something I'm gonna fix here in a moment. But now I'm gonna have to, so I have to blow dry that.
Okay, so now let's go in the opposite direction. Let's darken this. We've got our, let's take some of our black. We could use blue, uh, but I'll take the black instead. Glazing fluid in there. Let's get a bit more black. Just to speed this whole process up. So I'm trying to convert that V-neck that I had kind of accidentally put there into a crew neck. Blow dry that.
I gotta blow dry that again. Hmm. I think I should go the other way. So let's. I'm just gonna wipe a bunch of this away. This is. Let's just clean. Okay, so I'll just, I kind of made a bit of a mistake, so I'm just going to fix that all up. But it's definitely getting more and more white.
So I just used a little bit of a slightly lighter color. Or uh, not lighter, sorry. Uh, less uh, tinted color, just a, more closely to my original. Ugh, I probably shouldn't have done that last night. Okay, so I'm just going to go back in the other direction. Just a little bit of glazing fluid. Just will wake up some of this darker paint a bit here. Really making that tushy look kind of round. I think that might be enough on that dress. <laughs> I'm going to be here all night working on this. Okay, so let's move on from the dress. Let's do her arms and hat and feet. Cleaned, dried my brush off into a big clump of paint. So I can dry the, clean the brush again. I was like, oh, there's <laughs> more paint coming off the brush than I put on there. Okay. Um, so we're gonna mix a skin tone. So to do that, we're going to let's zoom back up here. Let's take our warm yellow, a little bit of warm red, a little bit of warm blue. So you see, here's my combination: warm red, or sorry, the warm yellow, warm red, warm blue. And let's we want really mostly yellow. A little bit of red and a little bit of blue. The blue is what will make it go brown. If we don't put any blue in there, it'll be more of a peachy color, especially as we go to this next step. Look how gummy that white is. So that gets us a little bit on the, that's the lighter shade of that skin tone. And then let's do the darker version. Let's take a little bit more blue and red. I might be, oh, let's just go into this blue even darker. That would definitely be the darkest we need to go for, for that skin tone. It's almost a little bit too much white in there. So let's just counteract that with a little bit more black. So it's gray and not just light. Okay.
So let's put a little bit of glazing fluid in a few different places, right? So I got glazing fluid here, here, and here. Let's, what should we do? Let's start with our, let's go to the darkest part actually first. Let's start there. We, we sort of, we, it's, there's no, I, I so often think it is easier to do the darker and then lighten it up, but sometimes I switch back and forth as probably some people notice. It's, um, it just sort of depends on the painting, I think. her elbow. Don't forget her legs down here. Just use. Ooh, let's. I'm gonna take. You know, I was gonna. Yeah, let's take some of this darker color. This is my darker brown from before.
Uh, I'm going to go to my black that I had here. Let's just go right there. Okay. So I'm still using my black here. Okay, let's go to our lighter uh, color here that I mixed probably 10 minutes ago.
not really light enough. Let's take a bit more white. Back to my black. I'm, it's pretty tight in here, so I might just have to leave this as it is and A little bit too ambiguous for my taste, but we are <laughs> very zoomed in here, so. Okay. I think I think that's okay for for the woman. I mean, like if I back out to, you know, the the scale that we're actually looking at this painting. Most people are never going to look at it that closely. So, you know, if your own painting kind of looks looked a little bit like mine up close, I mean, that's the size of my thumb. All right, so there's... I know there are people who are great at miniature painting. Um, that looks like Pascal went to bed. So, yeah, I'm happy with the figure. Looks good. Good enough for government work, I think, for sure. <laughs> okay. Now he does take this same color that I just painted there, maybe not quite as with as much white, and does go around in a few places. Maybe it's gonna get a little bit not quite so dark. Or quite so <clears throat> bright, I mean. Or saturated.
left of that. Ah. So, speaking of just leaving it, let's just erase a little bit of that. Just get a little bit of water on here. It did wipe a bit more than I wanted off, but I think that's okay. Black. Yeah, I could do... Yeah, you know what? Let's just move on from those little details there. I think that's definitely maybe a little bit brighter, but actually it kind of works. I kind of like how it pops a little bit more. In the, I mean, I could take a little bit of, of black glaze and just go over that whole thing, and it would would kind of take some of the the tint out like that bright uh, kind of pinky quality but you know I kind of it's working okay at this point so lastly uh, whoops those leaves so to get some leaves let's mix uh, a We're gonna mix two different greens. Let's take our our cool uh, uh, blue and our cool yellow, and we'll get this a little bit more intense green, uh, a little bit cooler green. And so I'm just mixing a few different, ver a couple different versions of it, and then also let's make a warm green. It's darker. You can see I didn't even bother cleaning my brush. I don't, it doesn't bother me at this point. Um, I'll take that. And then let's do a version that's darker, that's warm. Warmer blue. Ooh, that's, well, that's not so bad. Especially get a bit of brown in there. So you can see now we've got four different um, greens here. These cooler greens and warmer greens. And we're going to kind of ping pong around back and forth throughout all of them. Okay. Just going to mix this up while I got that paint in my brush. For a darker one. So let's start, actually, you know what, let's start with the cooler, darker, cooler colors. Okay, this is going to be a bit of a challenge to try to do this as quickly as possible.
just doing that to kind of fix a little bit of extra paint that was... Well, I guess, you know, there is that thing there. I was saying I was just going to do that to... Because there was a bit of... Um, canvas that had been exposed there. So I'm just trying to kind of create this layering effect of... Um, almost like feathers or um, fish scales or something. So this is, I'm just speeding along here, and this is not, you know, maybe the, the most, my finest hour of painting the leaves and everything, but really all I, I care about here is just that uh, it's believable as leaves in the trees and
Okay, so let's just zoom out and you can just see what that looks like. I'm just going to go right in with this darker um, uh, warmer green So these are kind of obviously just darker shapes that are in the shadows. And you notice I'm not doing every single, I'm not going over everything I just did. So the combination of these, this now warmer color going over top of some of the cooler colors just keeps the cooler colors from leaping too far into the, well, I mean, they're not going to go into the foreground, but it, it's keeping these shapes more foreground oriented. Let's take the lighter cool or warm green. So now this is just me playing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not at all concerned about the original and how closely this looks to the original. I'm having fun with these colors and just sort of creating my own weird patterning and. Like, again, as long as from, you know, across the room, this looks like leaves in a tree, perfect. Ah. I knew as soon as I put those brush strokes down there that they would get on my wrist.
forgot about these guys down here, so <clears throat> I'm just going to replicate some of the things I've been doing. So the, this is a mistake that I'm trying to incorporate into the painting, like Bob Ross and his happy trees here. Those were intended, originally supposed to be in the background, and so they're not in his version here. But I'm trying to just make them work. Basically, what I'm just painting is this blob here and this blob here, which uh, I just somehow forgot. And so anyway, it looks a little bit weird, but let's see if we can make it work. And then just uh, now I'm taking a bit of my little bit brighter, cool yellow. Because these are little areas where sunlight is hitting some of these leaves. In fact, maybe I should even do put a little bit of white in here.
Maybe I'll, if I just zoom out, you can just see. Definitely, that's what you get for doing it as quickly as possible. Hmm, how do I feel about that? Hmm. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow dry it and then actually go a little bit darker. I'm going to take my black glaze and just go over some big areas in here. And I think that'll help. Okay, so this final little bit here, I'm taking my black and my glazing fluid. Blending brush handy. Let's just take a look at them side by side. Um, I think that's okay. What's always nice about glazing is we still have all those colors there. They're just getting kind of uh, toned, well, uh, shaded. And so we're just um, making really do some kind of nice, like, so, so basically I, I'm not hiding any, what I've got here. I'm just darkening it there. I think that's better. It's obviously kind of different. It would have, would have paid f for me to have maybe studied the way he did those leaves a little closer, but it's like 1230 at night here and, uh, it's time for kick my feet up and relax Maybe I'll just take a little bit of I don't want it to be too black let's take just a bit of my greens
could also take that and just darken her, but you know, I think, I think I could probably live with that. Now, a little scratch on the bottom there that Okay, so I think that's good enough. Let's Okay, it's time for our side-by-side -side comparison and just check out how these two paintings look when they're side by side, my version and the original masterpiece mm. by LL Fitzgerald. So before we do so, Please like the video, hit subscribe and the notification button so you know when these oddly timed videos are happening. Um, join the Facebook group and upload your artwork to the Facebook group. And here we go. So that uh, once a month I go through here and offer feedback on all the great artwork that you've created, whether it's this painting that we've just completed or anything else of the other 250 other paintings that you can do that we've done as part of this channel. You're welcome to um, go all the way back to the beginning and just like many people have done here and start posting your results from the very, very beginning and see how you, you go. And just, obviously you're surrounded by 600 other people that have been there, done that, who will give you encouragement and carry you through the difficulties, the struggles that will inevitably happen as you're learning to paint. Um, also, if you want to leave a donation, you can leave just a 25 cent donation through PayPal or the YouTube Super Chat. You can send an e-transfer uh, by contacting me through uh, my website. Um, there's my email addresses on my website. And you can contact me through the Facebook group as well if you want to send an e-transfer. Anyway, uh, let's see how they turned out. Here's the original masterpiece. And then there's my version of the masterpiece and let's kind of kind of do a little bit of critical judgment <laughs> on my version here and um you know i think overall i think it turned out really well you know i think our the sky you know even though the clouds are a little bit different um i'm pretty happy with oh, what that weird blob shape <laughs> Some of them, they look like, uh, what are they? What kind of whale are those? Like man manta whales or whatever? Just, they kind of look like they're, I don't know. They, maybe they could have been a little bit more level in there. But, you know, I, otherwise I'm pretty happy with the way those look. Excuse me. The, um, the trees in the background, they might be a little bit too intense. I probably could have... Um, darkened them a little bit with a little bit more gray. They're, the colors, you know, are... Um, but I don't mind. They, 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 in the context of the overall painting, I think they work, but just, you know, when I compare them... Oh, 
just noticed there was that pathway, a brown pathway. Hmm. I think I'm going to do that just before I... It is a part of this painting that I do like. I really should have noticed this much earlier. I don't know how I missed it. A lot going on in this painting, so I'll forgive myself if you can forgive me. I think that helps. That it is kind of a nice little um, meandering road that goes into the painting. There. Just gonna make this a bit wider yeah that's perfect that also kind of activates a little bit of that bottom left corner. Okay, so other than that, I think we're okay. Um, let's zoom in. Oops, maybe not quite that far. Let's start in the top left corner of this painting. Now again, the trees are totally different. I just uh, didn't have the time nor patience at <laughs> you know, almost one o'clock in the morning to to focus on them. So I, I did that sloppy, quick version here. Uh, uh, it's okay. As I said, I think I'm pretty happy with the sky. Let's look at this, this tree. This kind of knot in the tree or the way it kind of uh, twists is something you see, especially in... His later work he really seems to kind of fall in love with that type of uh, motif I guess and starts to create these kind of semi abstract images that kind of look like human limbs or tree branches it's not entirely clear what they are I wish I had spent more time there, but whatever. It's what's done is done. That's for another painting or for one of you to to worry about. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, our figure here. I think that turned out pretty good. I, I kind of got a little bit uh, impatient on her right arm there, and just sort of extended her dress to cover a bit of that. Just because I just, at a certain point here, I'm kind of like, ah, time's flying. But otherwise, and you know, her dress is a little bit brighter. 
I just paint, I, you know, I, you could, you saw I made a couple little mistakes here, so I had to kind of, I actually wiped all the way down to the bare canvas and had to kind of cover it back up. If I wanted, I could fix it, but it, I actually kind of think it looks nice. And don't forget those little feet poking out the bottom. I think that's an important part of this dress. Um, okay. Got that, this weird little tree stump that thing that, not even, it's all, yeah. Anyway, it's odd and I kind of like it odd, so I included it there. I could have done more glazing on here and put a highlight there, but that's uh, okay. It's also a little sloppy here. That green I was just using, I could bring it back there, couldn't I? Anyway, that's, what am I doing here? That's a that little path I could put a little bit of Yeah, I think that's okay. Let's just one last peek at the whole thing all together after a couple little quick alterations there. Okay, there we are. Another one bites the dust there, folks. So thank you so much for painting along with me, everybody. Uh, it's been great seeing some people that I that don't often get an opportunity to tune in during the live live streams. So 
thank you so much for for making that time out of your day um who was it A special shout out to sounds of life who tuned in during their break at work in vietnam to to watch us today thank you so much sounds of life and all of you for watching and for painting i can't wait to see your version of today's painting or whatever else you've been working on thank you we will see you in a couple of well about four days for another for franz johnston um, another member of the group of seven two more group of seven members to go and then something completely different which i think you'll enjoy thanks everybody we'll see you again have a great night Bye-bye. Bye-bye.